So in this video, which is the second part of three, I'll be showing you how to factorise cubic polynomials using the fact theorem and comparing coefficients. So here are the steps that we're going to be taking to follow this method, which I'd recommend that you make a note of in your notes. Uh, so the first step is what we're going to do is find the uh, one factor by using the fact theorem, which we're going to call n, by, and you can obviously use your calculator as per the last video. And then once we've found one of the factors, we're going to write it in the form of x uh, plus or minus n. So if we found that when we substituted 1 and it gave us a value of 0 when we substituted into the polynomial, then our bracket would be x minus 1. So it's always the reverse sign of whatever you're substituting in. And then once we've done that, what we're then going to do is we're going to multiply that bracket by ax squared plus bx plus c. And it's always going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. Then we'll expand the brackets out, factorise the coefficients of x squared and x. And then step four, we'll compare the coefficients to the original polynomial to those in step three, and thus finding the values of a, b, and c. And then once we've got the values of a, b, and c, it will then form a quadratic equation. And then what we'll try and do is we'll either solve that by either factorising by using the quadratic formula. And if it doesn't factorise, then we kind of know that we can just leave it as it is. So what I'm going to do now is going to go through the same six examples that we did in the last video, just so that we can compare the methods and you can decide which one's the best one to use. Now, my own personal experience, I would say that this method should always be the way to go. But obviously, everyone is different. Everyone has their own sort of preference. So I'll just explain to you through an example of how we work through these steps to get to the final answer. So if we start off with number one, which coincidentally does factorise quite nicely, but I'm going to show you how this method works. So here what we're going to do is we've got x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now I know that in terms of numbers, I need to use the factor theorem to find the first factor. So it's either going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, or plus and minus six. So it's definitely going to be a combination of one of these eight options. Now I know in the last video I said about using the smallest value, which in theory the smallest value is going to be minus six, but what I meant by starting with the smallest number, it's starting with the smallest digit. So what I'm going to do then is use my calculator and work out what the uh, smallest value is. Now it's really, really important that you do show you're working out or shown that you're attempting to substitute the values in. Now you don't need to go too crazy in terms of how you're substituting this in, in terms of writing 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared minus 5 times 1 minus 6. Writing in this format should be absolutely fine. Your examiners will have some aspect of knowledge of maths, so it might be a case of just all they're looking for is at least one substitution where you've got it. Now, sometimes it might be pot look like the first attempt you do will get the first one, which is fine. But like I said, it's important that you do show rather than just picking out thin air. So. I know that when I substitute 1, it, it does not equal 0, so I try minus 1. So when I substitute minus 1, that does equal 0, so therefore x plus 1 is a factor. So I've now found my first factor. Now I could have easily substituted in, I could have kind of used my calculator, um, but we've definitely found our first factor and that's where we're going to stop. Now the difference between this method is I'm not going to continue with substituting these numbers to find our potentially three factors. But what I'm going to do is use this method of multiplying. So we've kind of done step one. So next thing we're going to do is move on to, so if I just hashtag that as hashtag one, as step one. So hashtag two, what we're now going to do is we're going to multiply this newly found factor by ax squared plus bx plus c. And then for step three, what I need to do now is expand all of this out. So we've got ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx. And then we've got one ax squared plus bx plus c. And one thing to note is how I've set this work out. So I've set it in nice, easy columns because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these these terms up together and it's a lot easier for me to add up if they're in nice neat columns so adding this all up we get a x cubed now it then says for step four it tells us to compare uh, to factorize what well, part of well, part three says to fact to uh, factorize now what that factorizing element means is I'm going to join these two things together 
so rather than writing them separately I'm going to write this as b plus a x squared and in similar fashion I'm going to combine these two things together in other words factorize the coefficients of x in which I'm going to get c plus b x and I've got plus c now step four what that then does it then asks me to compare the coefficients to the original equation so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write down again the original formula uh, polynomial sorry minus 5x minus 6 now being careful with the colors that I'm picking here so for example so now what I know is I know that a is going to be equal to 1 so what I can do is I know that a is going to equal 1 I know that the coefficient of x squared is b plus a here and that should equal plus 2 so I can write b plus a equals positive 2 now I know that a equals 1 so I've got b plus 1 equals 2 so therefore b must equal 1 and then finally what I can then do if I get a different highlighter for blue now rather than looking at this one it's a lot easier for me to compare these two here and what I've then got is that c equals minus 6 now with each of these coefficients found what I can then do if I find a color that I've not used which is going for pink so or a lilac color I'd say so what I can then do is substitute this back into our formula so in which I had if I write it out again I've got x plus 1 ax squared plus bx plus c now if I substitute my a b value a b c values in I get x plus 1 a equals 1 so that's just x squared plus 1x which is just x minus 6 now the the last part of step 5 is to factorize this quadratic if possible so what I need to do is try and factorize this which it does factorize nicely which gives me x plus 1 x plus 3 x minus 2 and lo and behold we've got our three factors so regarding number 2 if we get started on that so starting off we've got x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 30 and what we need to do is we need to find a factor uh, using you find the first factor by first of all using values that are factors of plus, uh, plus 30 both plus and minus so this could either going to be plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 plus or minus 5 plus minus 6 plus minus 10 plus minus 30 and we've also got plus minus 15 which I've missed off there so we're going to use a combination of these and again I could use my calculator or I can just simply guess values of this in which the probably the smallest value you will find is f of minus 2 is going to be equal to 0 so therefore x plus 2 is, um, is a factor so moving on to the second step which is then multiplying this first factor so we've got x plus 2 and we're going to multiply that by ax squared plus bx plus c so going through the motions we've got ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx and then we've got 2ax squared plus 2bx plus 2c adding that all together we're going to get ax cubed plus b plus 2a x squared plus c plus 2b x plus 2c and then writing down the original equation which I'm just going to write in a different color uh, let's go for orange so here what we've got is we've got x cubed minus 6 x squared minus x plus 30. So what we're going to find is now comparing the coefficients I know that a is going to equal 1, b minus 2a is going to add up to minus 6 
and looking at this I've got positive 2c is going to add up to 30. So I've kind of done it a little bit quicker than I had done on the previous example but once you've got it you're okay and so here what we've got is we've got a equals 1 b min plus 2a equals minus 6 so if a equals 1 we've got b plus 2 equals minus 6 so b equals minus 8 and if I just put a little box around there and we've got 2c equals 30 so c equals 15 so once we've got those values and again I'm just gonna kind of split this page up because I'm running out of space and I want everything on the screen so what I've got is I've got x plus 2 and then I'm gonna have x squared because I've already got 1x squared minus 8x plus 15 which does factorize in which our two values are going to be minus 5 uh, sorry x minus 5 let's rub that out and write a little bit neater I'm not sure what's going on there so here we've got x minus 5 x plus 3 and there is our factorized polynomial so again as you can see once you've practiced the method and once you've mastered the presentation it can be done relatively quite quickly now, one of the advantages of doing this is when we move on to the next couple of examples. So, if we move on to question three, following the exact same format, so I've got x cubed plus 5x squared plus 8x plus 4. So, first thing we want to do is find a factor. So, if I substitute 1 into there, I'm not going to, that's not going to equal zero but if I substitute minus one into there it is going to equal zero so therefore x plus one is a factor and then if I then go through the methods that's just on the side there so I've got x plus one ax squared plus bx plus c and then expand the brackets out I get ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx and then end up with ax squared plus bx plus c and then I've got collecting all the terms together I get b plus ax squared plus c plus bx plus c and then comparing the coefficients I've got a equals 1 b plus a has got to equal the coefficient of x squared which in the above case is 5 c plus b equals 8 and c equals 4 so obviously I've only got a choice between one of these two I have to go for so I'll just go for the first one just because it's from left and right so I've got b plus 1 equals 5 so b equals 4 so then substituting those numbers into my ax squared plus bx plus c so I've got x plus 1 I've got 1x squared plus 4 lots of x plus 4 and then I've then got to ask myself does this factorize yes it does so I've got x plus 1 x plus 2 x plus 2 and I can then collect these two by writing x plus 1 x plus 2 squared so what this has got it has got it's got one repeated root the question is when I use my calculator I wasn't too sure which one had the repeated root was it x plus 1 or was it at x plus 2 so by doing this method it kind of tells you straight about which one it is without having to either think about plotting it or the shape of the graph so when we looked at question 4 in the last video when we were just using the fact theorem only we noticed that the calculator only found one factor for us so let's just explain what that then shows because obviously when you've only got one factor it could either mean one or two things that you've got one repeated root um, or you have got a just a single root in there so for this we've got x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8 and if I just use the factor theorem when I substitute 1 it doesn't give me a value when I substitute in 2 it does equal 0 so therefore x minus 2 is a factor and then going through the steps again I've got x minus 2 
AX squared plus BX plus C. And then expanding them out, we get AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX equals minus 2AX squared plus minus 2. I'm just getting a little X and writing too fast. Uh, minus 2BX minus 2C. And collecting that all up, we get AX cubed plus B minus 2A. And it's, again, just be careful with the signs. And again, setting your work out just makes it a lot easier for you to know what's going to go in your brackets. Plus C minus 2B X minus 2C. And if we relate that to the original equation, we've got X cubed minus 6 x plus 12 x minus 8 in which we've got a equals 1 b minus 2 a equals minus 6 in which i've got b minus 2 equals minus 6 so b is going to equal minus 4 and we've also got that minus 2 c equals minus 8 so c equals 4. so substituting those numbers back into that expression there we've got x minus 2 and then we've got x squared minus 4x and plus 4. And then we ask ourselves, does this factorise? Well, yes, it does. So we've got x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2, which we can then simplify as x minus 2 cubed. So when it was only given as one factor, again, when we look at another example, we need to make sure that we're factorising it fully and obviously we would never been able to get to this stage had we just used the calculator. So one thing that you should notice with regards to how question, example 5 differs to the other previous four examples is that here our coefficient of x cubed is greater than 1, whereas in all the previous examples we just had a single x cubed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that the method does not change when this is the case. So the first thing we want to do is find the first factor. So when I substitute 1 into this, it does actually equal 0. So I've hit the jackpot with my first attempt, which basically says that x minus 1 is a factor. So then from this, we're going to repeat the process of what we did before. So x minus 1, ax squared plus bx plus c. And multiplying this out, I get ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx and then I'm going to end up with minus ax squared minus bx minus c. Adding those two lines up and collecting our like terms we get ax cubed plus b minus ax squared plus c minus b x minus c. So then comparing this to our original, our original coefficients what we get is that a equals 2, b minus a equals 1. So as b a equals 2, we've got b minus 2 equals 1, so b equals 3, and minus c equals minus 1, so c equals 1. So transferring those back into this bracket here, we get x minus 1, then we're going to get 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 and then we just need to ask ourselves does this factorize well yes it does now if you're not sure about how to factorize what I, what I call complex um, quadratic equations have a look at the video that I've posted up uh, that allows you to do that but what you'll find is you end up with 2x plus 1 and x plus 1 so moving on to our last example, which looks a bit bare compared to the previous example, so there doesn't seem to be need to do much. So the first thing we want to check that, obviously it does look like a difference of two squares question, but unfortunately in this case it is not. So here we've just got x cubed minus 1. Now again, in terms of making this equal to 0, well x just needs to equal 1. So when I substitute 1 into this, I do get 0. So therefore x minus 1 is a factor. So if I go through the notions that we have been doing on the previous examples, I've got x minus 1, ax squared plus bx plus c, in which I get ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx minus ax squared minus bx minus c. Add the two things together in which we get ax cubed 
plus b minus a x squared plus c minus b x minus c and then comparing it to our original equation here so i have got how many x cubes have i got well one i've got no x squared so b minus a should equal zero so here i'm going to end up with b minus one equals zero so b is going to equal one and minus c equals minus one so c equals one so from those three values i substitute it into this bracket here in which what i then get is x minus one squared x minus one squared where have i got that from going to do lally probably because it's the last example and then we've got x squared plus x plus one now we then need to check to see if does this factorize well lo and behold it doesn't so all you see right here is does not well actually not a case of does it factorize we can then use doesn't factorize and if i use the quadratic formula there's no solutions to it in which that's absolutely fine so how we factorize this fully is just that and what that would actually be represented on a graph is we've got plus one here our y intercept is at minus one so what this would actually look something like is it would cross those two points and somewhere it would go like that so the fact is it only crosses the y-axis at uh, x-axis at one point only so it looks something along those lines uh, in terms of its shape but we'll move on to that when we look at sketching polynomials but like i said sometimes you can only get one solution which like example one there's really, there is only one solution sometimes you can only get two solutions and in other cases you get three so it's something to look out for don't automatically think that one that every single factorize fully question of a cubic a polynomial is going to have three brackets it could only have two um, it could only have one um, so it's something to look out for and don't automatically think that if this doesn't factorize that it's got no solutions where that's not going to be the case because sometimes you might have to use a quadratic formula and because your paper is a calculated paper using the quadratic formula should be a case of just entering a few numbers and substituting it in so it should be relatively quite easy so thank you for listening i hope this makes a little bit of sense and i'm not rubbing it on i felt as if i have but if you have any questions drop us an email at 162 maths at gmail.com or follow us on twitter and put a tweet to us